I believe that Terrarians often speedrun the game and never take their time on their worlds. I want to change that. So over the course of a year, I'll be playing on one world, with each stage of progression being blocked until the start of a new month. I'm doing this so I can seriously take my time in each stage of Terraria Calamity mod's progression and see what it has to offer. So for the month of January, I am only allowed to defeat the King Slime, I Cthulhu, Desert Scourge, and Krabulon. Otherwise, I can make no other form of progression. This is what happened. It's kind of surreal starting this journey new again. When I started the One Year One World Challenge in Vanilla last year, I only had a couple of hundred subscribers and was still figuring out what I even wanted to do. And after a year on that world, it's strange having a clean slate once again. If you have seen the previous series, welcome to the start of a new one, and if you're new, then I hope you'll join me on this year-long journey to see all that Terraria's biggest mod calamity has to offer. Last year my world was Crimson, so I figured this time I'd generate a world with Corruption, and of course I chose a large world of Master Mode, though in the end I'm not sure if Master Mode even matters, because apparently Revengeance Mode, a difficulty chosen in-game, is the quote, intended difficulty for Calamity, so I guess we're going to do that. I get a bag full of starter loot, and already things are moving a lot faster than in Vanilla. One thing that's also different with this run is that I know much less about Calamity Mod than I do about Vanilla. In Vanilla, the focus was diving deeper into Terraria's content than I had ever done before, but I had a strong foundation from which to explore further, but this time, there will be a lot of stuff I don't even know about. I've played Calamity a few times, but usually with friends who end up doing a lot of the farming and searching for materials while I'm a coast. <laughs> so if you don't know what's going on with this mod either, you're in good company. Right next door to spawn is a cave with a treasure chest in sight, which is a lovely thing to see in any world. I am so nervous when generating a world for this challenge because whatever I end up with is what I'm stuck with for an entire year, so seeing a nice cave at the start is good. The first chest has climbing claws and another one a little further down has an aglet. I swear some worlds don't even generate with these in them, so finding one is nice, but Calamity also adds a super easy recipe to craft these things, so of all the worlds to get an easy aglet, this wasn't one I needed it. <laughs> a minecart track further down led me to absolutely nothing until I came to an opening where I promptly stepped on a trap and was crushed by a boulder. Oh. Sure didn't take long for me to uh, die. As I gather more wood, I should mention the mods I'm using. This is Calamity with absolutely zero add-ons. The only quality of life mod I'm using is Magic Storage, because with the number of items in this mod, organization with normal chests would be a nightmare. I'm not even using Vein Miner or Ore Excavator, whatever you might want to call it, there might be two separate mods, and those would allow me to mine entire veins of ore in just one instance as opposed to each little chunk individually. So those are the only two content mods I have, Magic Storage and Calamity. I have a few others, but they don't affect gameplay in any way. One just adds color to the Calamity Relics, which I didn't get until week two, I believe. And another one is called Better Zoom, so I can zoom in closer if I want. And the reason I'm not using any other Calamity add-ons is because when I'm doing this challenge, I want to make it as purely, quote, vanilla as possible. So I'm making it as vanilla Calamity as you can possibly get. With that out of the way, I found the desert where a Wolfram enemy greets me. There was also a big hole in the desert, which looks like 1.3 generation, or maybe even 1.4.3. I thought they were removed, maybe Calamity added them back in, but I have some memory of these things having a chance of still generating in vanilla, just maybe a really smaller one. A Wolfram rover sends me home, and I just realized I have a short respawn time, which is neat. While I was home, I figured I needed some shelter before night fell. Usually, I just immediately make a shoebox, but I actually flattened out the ground before building the initial box. I have plans for a massive castle in the future, but for now, I'm more worried about gearing up. With the shelter up, I crafted full cactus armor, finished the suitable housing, and headed underground where I found my first heart crystal in a little lake with nothing more than a weak little jellyfish. Oh shoot, that's a lot of- Oh! But we got a life crystal, that's good! <laughs> oh, and I'm spawning on top of my house, which isn't ideal. Back to the mines where I find a few more minecart tracks and focused on gathering gold, and as I'm doing all of this, I can't help but reflect on how the video for the entire month of January last year wasn't even 5 minutes long. This almost feels weird, diving into the game like this while I'm just getting started. It's like a normal run at this point, hardly even a special run, but at the same time, it's super special, because the first year I hardly paid attention to what I was doing, but now, every little thing is special, 
because it's a long series of firsts. Where are the treasure chests? Treasure, heart crystals. Hello, oh, there we go. There we go, okay. What do we get in the very first golden chest in one year one world? What is it? Hermes boots, hey, zick, let's go. I also had this epic moment I have to include. Oh, I, oh, oh, get juked, oh, let's go. That shouldn't have worked. That really should not have worked. At home, I built a little room for my spawn area. And as I left, I spotted a lawn gnome just randomly there. So that's cool. Time to keep going left. I got to check out the surface for the first time on this world. Exciting. I come to the corruption where I thought I found an enchanted sword shrine, which was also exciting until I found out there was nothing there. Ah, no sword shrine. Oh man, no sword shrine. I'm upset now. I tried braving the corruption, but that didn't end well. So I went to the tundra on the right side of the world, and there was this neat calamity structure and the treasure chest inside included several building accessories, and I find it weird that these are the things included, but I'll take it. I wanted to finish checking the surface, but this cave called me to adventure. The tundra was actually super easy to explore, which is odd to me. The tundra usually feels like a bunch of small caves with massive amounts of mining in between. Kind of annoying to explore, really, but this one is quite open. There were flurry boots, a breathing rod, and a blizzard in a bottle, which is super helpful. There was a band of regen, and then I died and lost four gold, and I don't know about you, but I'm a greedy little boy, and I can't stand leaving four gold lying around this early in the game. So I went to fetch that gold after some struggling. Now, I've been collecting some Wolfram metal scraps from the enemies, you know, you know, the Wolfram ones, and got enough to actually make a fun little minion, and having a minion this early is great. I spent a long time exploring the caves and mining for gold before I finally continued to the right side of the world and just about cleared the corruption when I spotted something special. Alright, who's the one who said I get a desert pyramid? Who said that I get the desert pyramid? Because here it is! Someone earlier had said they blessed my world with a desert pyramid and they were right. They just failed to tell me it generate weirdly like this. <laughs> the chest had a magic carpet and the pyramid itself was rather large and went into the corrupt caves, which is kind of neat. Soon after, just before the desert, I found a living tree and a sigh of relief came over me because I was worried my world wouldn't have any of these and I love living trees and would hate to have a world without one. Maybe I could make my own, but I mean, it's harder to get the living wood wands without these, all right? <laughs> it was also fun because a modded shrine was down there. Though the accessory is just kind of okay, it's better in multiplayer in my opinion. I made it to the ocean, but it's not the ocean, it's the sulfuric sea, which is really deep. And I fell in, and remember my trident gave me extra movement in the water, so I figured I could swim down and perhaps snag some gear because I'm a greedy little boy. Oh, I forgot those did damage. Ow! 30! I did get the money back though. I was still low on health at this point, so I began the long journey searching for elusive heart crystals. It just felt like they were nowhere to be found. There were some, but I got full gold armor with only 240 health, and I swear, I usually get full health first. I also have typically explored the skies by now, but no gravitation potions were in the chests I'd found, so I used rope to get up to space and jumped to the first planetoid in sight. These things are something that Calamity adds. Some people call them meatballs, and I can't disagree. There's a bunch of them in the space layer, and they make it a whole lot easier to casually explore the skies. I think some of the stuff is important or something, but I don't know. I was just here to collect an easy enchanted sword and mine copious amounts of iron. It did lead to a little side quest, though, where there was this honey chest, and I needed to know what was inside it, but then I died. <gasps> that bee, Wait, the bee! <laughs> That bee has all my money! <laughs> the bee stole my money! No! Needless to say, it took a while for me to get it and be rewarded with a bazaar. Now that I had an enchanted sword and gold armor, I could easily search the left side of the world, but there wasn't much there. Just found the jungle and there's massive living mahogany tree in like the middle of it, and down below is a giant beehive I was too afraid to explore. Queen Bee isn't unlocked yet, so Gotta be careful, <laughs> I can't be accidentally summoning her. The ocean was also this goofy looking one. Man, still on week one and I need more to go. I am doubling the amount of time I'm spending each week on this world than I did last year, figuring I'd need that extra time considering Calamity's size, but that also means there's so much more to talk about. 
Either I'll have to cut more, or else these videos are just going to be an hour long, which, I don't know, would you want them that long? <laughs> Anyways, there was a lab inside the tundra which had free arctic diving gear, and I found another blizzard in a bottle. I'm going to be building three builds again this year, and I'm planning on playing the Summoner, Mage, and Calamity's Rogue class, which will be fun, though at the start of any world, I just use whatever I happen to stumble across, so I guess I'll melee for now. The lab did have gravitation potions, which let me search the skies easier, but I didn't find much. Yeah, if you haven't liked it already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, dude! And an evil presence started watching me while up there. I guess it's time for the first boss fight. Usually, I don't fight bosses till I'm at full health, but this'll give me a chance to see if Revengeance Mode made changes to bosses in any way. They'll do more damage and have more health in all likelihood, but I'm not sure if their AI or attacks are different in any way. For a while, he was the same, but turns out there's a third form now. Yeah, jerk. Oh, that was different. Oh, okay, he is different. Oh, the boss is actually different. This new phase has the eye doing long straight dashes while spawning in more servants to annoy you. It's not all that complex, and in some ways it's actually easier, but he does seem to be moving faster overall, which definitely makes it a lot harder than I thought it would be. I hadn't been able to prep that much and ended up losing in part because my respawn point kept me from healing with a nurse quickly enough. Well, guess that means the bosses are going to be different, so that's fun. I fixed my spawn situation, and as it is one of the few places I have yet to explore, I went down to the jungle, which apparently is where all the heart crystals were hiding. I collected some supplies, found a few chests, and got to full health in no time at all. But it didn't take long for the eye to come back for round two, and this time, I came out victorious. Oh, and if you're unfamiliar with the red and green bars next to my inventory, those are called Rage and Adrenaline. Rage fills up as I consistently deal damage to an enemy, and green one charges during boss battles and resets when I'm hit. Both can be used for a temporary damage boost, with Adrenaline being a much bigger boost, serving as a reward for being aggressive while also avoiding damage. I had finally collected enough gems to craft magic storage at this point, and that's super handy. My storage situation was already getting out of hand. This will serve as the one-stop shop for all my storage and crafting needs. I also figured I'd craft the slimy crown and get to fighting King Slime. I honestly didn't expect to be fighting any bosses the first week, but here we are fighting the second boss of the run. I even crafted this weapon called the Icicle Staff that worked quite well against him. I really quite enjoyed this weapon. As for the King Slime changes, he spawned in different slime variants and at some point spawned some crystal that shoots at me, but I have more than enough mobility to deal with all of this. I found two teleportation potions earlier, and I love these things, so I drank one and it brought me to the underworld, and then I drank another and it brought me to another part of the underworld, but this time in Calamity's Brimstone Crag. And I can't help but wonder if the game is trying to tell me something by bringing me to this biome twice. Maybe someday I'll get the demon conch and can teleport down there myself, but in the meantime, I searched the desert for a regular conch. The Sulfuric Sea had this event called Acid Rain earlier, and I figured having an easy way to get to the sea to fight that event would be a good idea. And of course it was a good idea, because it was my idea. So when the Acid Rain happened, I farmed the enemies till they were good and dead, and chopped some of the trees here for rogue armor, when the Angler appeared from the belly of a gator. We got the angler, the everyone's fa favorite NPC. Yeah, get him. Eat him. Yeah. <gasps> what? He just, what? That's kind of broken. I will gladly take that and craft a good set of rogue armor with a golden knife throwing weapon. And I can hardly believe how well I've fleshed out some of these builds already. But that finally brings us to the end of the first week, where I spruced up the houses just a little bit until I reached a point I can get the massive kingdom I planned underway. Building is great and all, but even better than that is pure unadulterated destruction. And with that in mind, at the end of the year, I will be firing one mini nuke 2 from this rocket launcher for every subscriber I have. So help me blow up a fresh small world into smithereens by subscribing and joining me for this year-long journey. This week already feels weird, because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to beat the rest of the bosses, which would leave over half of the month to kind of just figure out what to do. Last year my entire time was occupied with gearing up, with a little time left over to get an initial base built, but since I'm doubling my time in this world this year, I'm already wondering what I'm going to do. But that's okay, I still have some bosses to fight for now. The first thing I realized is that I don't have a blade of grass. It's my favorite pre-hard mode sword outside of the Knight's Edge, so even though I'm not running a melee build, I'm still going to craft one. It didn't take much gathering of materials since I did spend time in the jungle last week, so it didn't take long for me to get my hands on that weapon. 
don't know why I said it like that. Why did it sound like that? I guess I might as well head to the bosses at this point, and the first one on the list is the Desert Scourge. He's technically listed as being before the Eye of Cthulhu, so theoretically, I'm already more powerful than I need to, but I have no idea what any of these bosses are like in Revengeance mode. Well, maybe I have a general idea, but I haven't played them single player, so it's going to be different. After setting up desert housing for the sake of a pylon, I put together a quick arena and summoned the Desert Scourge. I don't have much in the way of piercing weapons, so I wasn't sure how I would fare against the worm, but it would turn out a star just so happened to strike it right after spawning, dealing 40% of the boss's health right off the bat. So that made things a whole lot easier, and the fight ended up being, well, over before I even realized it. I even did well enough to get adrenaline, and that always feels nice. Sure, it's an easier boss, but it's nice regardless. Due to the last battle being so easy, I figured I might as well fight the worm again, and the second battle was much more challenging, because not having that 40% of the boss's health gone for free it definitely makes a difference. I honestly wasn't sure what to do at this point. I had a few ideas, but the beginning of this run is filled with so many possibilities, I often find myself paralyzed by choices. After some thought, I concluded I might as well take on the next and final boss I can kill this month, and that would be Krabulon, the glowing mushroom crab. I never know how to prepare for these bosses, so I extended the glowing mushroom by blowing up the ceiling. I just had to craft the boss's summon real quick at the corruption. While there, I stumbled upon this small shrine with a neat accessory inside. Never seen this before, so that's cool. I considered building more of the arena for the crab, but instead I figured I'd just summon the thing and see what happens. This was also my chance to use the rogue class. It feels weird how I already have a viable mage and rogue class so early in the game, but I quite enjoy the opportunity to use rogue. Turns out the set bonus for this armor gives me an extra jump as well. That alone with my cloud and blizzard in a bottle gives me three jumps to utilize in this battle, which was more than I needed. The fight went off without a hitch. I mentioned before how I already had two classes built, and now I figured I'd get to work on preparing the third one. Crafting Victite armor, I had the base for my summon build, and I dug up the accessories that were at least somewhat summoner related. Although at this point, the crab drops a rogue weapon, and since I enjoyed using it in the last fight, I figured I'd kill him again and get me a really uh, cool rogue weapon. I don't know how to pronounce that. The weapon combined with the Luxor's Gift makes a pretty cool combo, and one of the fastest attacking ranged weapons I've ever seen. And if you don't know, the Luxor's Gift adds an uh, extra projectile to weapons depending on what class it is. So if you see little red balls or the purple little worm things, those are the main ones I'm using. Those are from this accessory. One more thing I could check off this month is the giant clam. He's not technically a boss and is not included in my progression, so I'm free to fight it whenever. As is though, it's still an early game mini boss. After digging down into the desert, I came across the sunken sea, which has always been one of my favorite biomes in Calamity. I'm not exactly sure why, I just like it. In a lot of ways, it's sort of boring, but I just like the underwater theming and general vibe of this place, I guess. The enemies down here have stupidly high defense though, and my weapon doesn't do very high damage. At least it has a super fast attack, so doing one damage at this speed was enough to kill these things slowly, but surely. How wonderful I've beaten every boss. It's only week two. We're not even done with week two, now what? Um, well there is Torch God, and having Torch God's favor this early in the game would definitely be really handy. Typically, I find a place with walls to set torches on, but instead I place them on the ground, you know, the place I stand on, so that was smart. I wasn't even sure there was enough room, and I always forget how many torches are needed to get this event going, so after slapping them down on every possible block, Torch God did eventually spawn. Thankfully, I could just hang out over to the side and dodge them easily enough, but this thing inflicts so many fire debuffs, it's kind of ridiculous. And that wraps up all the bosses, all the events, all the mini bosses that could be fought at this point. At least to the best of my knowledge. Having all those boxes checked left me with a quite easy decision. What do I do? I establish my kingdom. Ever since starting the year, I've wanted to build a massive kingdom at spawn. And so it's time to get to work on that. First things first, I flattened out the ground so I could later terraform it however I like. I'm not sure why I started with this before the spawn build, but the first structure I got to work on was the housing over the elevator. I had this grand idea for a medieval looking crane build with some houses. Once the houses were finished, I added the crane. Although it does look 
fine, in my opinion. There's definitely some improvement to be had, but that's how I always tend to do my builds. First, I lay out the initial idea, and later I add details or reconstruct the whole thing if I deem it necessary. Having the first idea actually in the world helps a load with figuring out how to actually get what I want when building. I added a little hook because it's got to have a little hook, what with it being a crane and all. I made one of the houses more detailed and added a counterweight to the crane itself. Looks like I added a plane tail to the thing, if you ask me. I'm not sure I'm happy with it, but it's down, so I can fix it later. For now, I wanted to make my natural spawn look better. Last year, I made a more natural looking building with living wood and leaves and eventually clouds. I tend to be better at making things like that, but this year I wanted my kingdom. And this is my first real step towards that. It's a simple tower, but that's all I need for now. Stone is something I'll need for my castle, and I'm a bit lacking on that front. Of course, the easiest way to collect blocks of any sort is by carpet bombing with dynamite. I just needed that dynamite. Turns out the demolitionist is on the other side of the world, and a blood moon spawned, which just made things absolutely fantastic. But I got there, purchased my dynamite, and blew up all the stone I need to continue crafting my kingdom. Before continuing the buildings, no kingdom can survive without powerful walls to protect it. Granted, these are just about useless in Terraria, considering my town doesn't go out that far, so mobs will continue to spawn, but it's the thought that counts, right? With my mighty walls to protect the kingdom, I got to work on the keep. Expanding from the central tower, I added an outline with these cool spiky things. I'm sure they have a technical name, but I don't know it for the life of me. One reason I often avoid building castles is because I never know what to do with them outside of the exterior walls. I needed to find some way to make the building interesting and not just gray bricks. With that in mind, this was my initial idea, but it's really not that good. So I tore down the copper plating and navy stone above it, replacing the plating with lab walls, and that was nice. I considered using lab wall instead of wood, but ended up using living wood while creating this rustic but also futuristic look that I'm going to stick with for now. That leaves two quite large openings, and I'm terrified of them. That's a lot of open space, and I suck at interiors no matter the build. What I ended up settling on was a tavern. It looks cool. Perhaps it doesn't have much sense having a tavern on the second floor of the keep, but, you know, who said it had to make sense anyways? That's the left side, and I haven't set up a garden yet, so, well, let's just put that on the right side. Now the keep is quite nice, although I'm fairly certain I'm going to make several changes as the weeks go on. Before wrapping up my building for the day, I really wanted to use the copper plating I'd crafted, and that combined with the Wolfram plating greatly improved the crane, making it look more like an actual crane while just being more interesting to look at as a whole. Still kind of funky looking, would love some suggestions, but I like it. To conclude the week, I spent time searching for the shimmer, ended up mining three separate holes before finally coming across the place, and before heading into the next week, I am inviting you to join me in a year-long journey in Terraria. It can be Calamity like I'm doing right now, Vanilla, or any other assortment of mods you like, and if you're doing a year-long journey, join my Discord and share your journey with others. It'll be a fun time, and great to see your journey. If I remember, I'll even share images that you share from some of your runs at the end of these videos. And also, just because this isn't multiplayer, you do it on your own, okay? Just, just to be clear on that front. Week 3, and this challenge is really putting me through my paces. Doubling the time I spent on this world has had so many unexpected consequences, and we're only in the first month. Sure, there's more bosses, and maybe that time will be needed later in the run, but right now, I've got more time than I know what to do with. This week started with the traveling merchant showing up, and he's selling dynasty wood, which is so very nice. I love and hate this building material, and always make sure to purchase a metric ton of the stuff when it's available. This week, I went into with only one idea in mind, and that was to explore. This is something I never really do in Terraria, for the sake of it. I mean, Terraria isn't exactly an exploration game. You pretty much only explore the world for the sake of finding the things that you need, and once you get them, is there really a point in continuing to see what else might be out there? It's not like there's a whole lot of things that are breathtaking. I hardly even explored in my first year-long run, but I have so much time and I spent so much time building last week that I figured I'd start this month by just roaming around. It is a mod after all, maybe there's things out there I don't know about, and sure enough, there was one. A glowing mushroom shrine, similar to shrines I've found before, and there's an accessory in the chest I've never seen. Not really a great one, but it does say it grows mushrooms when I walk on grass, so when I was done exploring, I checked to see if it'd grow glowing mushrooms on the surface. But that's not what it meant. <laughs> Infinite mushroom farm! 
Oh my goodness. What? What? This is broken. Pockets full of shrooms. I figured I should check an item off my list that will continue to stress me out if I don't do it right away. That task would be blowing up the area around the corruption to prevent its spread in hard mode. I just need to move the demolitionist into the main base as he's currently in the jungle and for some reason I used the conch to leave the vicinity instead of just walking away. But it was worth it because I noticed a funny little bug with the rogue class's stealth bar. The, <laughs> the stealth bar is just... It's way off! If you don't know, that's the stealth bar for the rogue class, and it charges whenever I'm not attacking. And if I use a rogue class weapon, when it's charged, it does more damage and usually has a special ability. It's a, a whole thing. Now that I got dynamite, I can start blowing up the space around the corruption. Nothing really of note happened during all of this, although separating the corruption was significantly more annoying to separate than the crimson. These corrupt caves had holes that dug deep into the ground, so I had to blow up space around them while the crimson was uh, more simple shaped. So point to the crimson there. Now I may or may not have uh, not been paying attention when purchasing dynamite and may or, or may not have accidentally spent every last cent uh, on said dynamite and decided farming the desert scourge for a hot second would be a very good and easy way to earn some quick cash. Oh, what am I doing? I jumped right into, oh my goodness. Ah, no. I died to the desert scourge! The road class, it would seem, is extra squishy, and I just now realized that I'm going to be running the three lowest defensive classes in the game. Mage, Summoner, and Rogue. I wanted to have a tank build for the sake of defense, but no! I decided to not because everyone and their dog has done a Calamity melee run, and I just wanted to be special. Uh, oh well, kind of embarrassing losing to the Scourge, but I redeemed myself with two back-to-back -back victories immediately after, only to learn the Scourge isn't exactly the best money farm. Beating this boss reminded me I needed a trophy room to showcase all the many bosses I have slain and figured the best place to do that would be right beneath spawn, so I mined out a nice rectangular area and then lined it with ebon stone and smooth marble. I used the ebon stone to create the platforms and then added white gem spark as a light source and then painted the ebon stone as the purple wasn't really doing it for me. I filled in a bunch of the wall with gray brick wall, but used living wood wall to create the sort of branching, corrupting, or whatever sort of look. The relics themselves needed something to make them more interesting, and I ended up using glass wall and platinum brick wall. Not sure I like it, open to suggestions, would love some actually. Next step in the kingdom building was at the space between the keep and the crane, because I'm going to be looking at this area for the entire run, I want it to look good. And so I added lamps with some gray brick spread around and then built a dynasty wood hut around the storage system. Sure hope I don't need to expand it later. Um, all of that is great, but I am itching to build a tree. But I suck at building trees. So I built a tree, a small one, which is much more manageable and it came out looking all right, I think. I just can't wait to get the mechanic for the actuators, but I won't get her till March, which is too bad. This will just have to float here for now, I guess. Also, I wanted the leaves to look cherry blossom-like, you know, bright pink. I know I've seen people do that, but I have no idea how to accomplish this. The kingdom is coming along quite well, but I'm out of ideas as to what to add at this moment, so I'm going to make the tundra pylon housing. There is a house that naturally generated there, so I decided to make a building beside it using the same materials. I love builds that fit in with the environment around them, as if they were a part of the natural generation, and I think I did a good job matching the original look. Also, a blood moon happened as I was building, which was nice, as I could grab a few bloody tears, but still no money trough for me. Speaking of pylons, having a cavern one at the shimmer is quite nice, but as it would turn out, the minor dude here is selling the jungle pylon. Well, not what I was expecting, but I suppose I'll take the pylon while I can and move the housing to the other side of the shimmer, which is definitely cave. Glow tulip, easy money. I'm gonna equip it. I don't even like it. I think it looks icky. <laughs> but I'm gonna have it just as a flex. I don't understand people who say this flower is rare. It's super easy to find. Just start mining beneath the ocean or look around the shimmer. It's quite common if you ask me, okay? Just, just, just look there. Right there. Pro tip. I finished the building and they were definitely going to need an upgrade. I threw a copper short sword at a slime and then finished the week by completing the elevator. 
And before moving on to the final week, one more plug! I have a second channel called Thorben Gaming. We check out all kinds of other games over there. I also just released a video on Dead Cells. I tried it for the first time. If you're interested in that, you can check out the second channel, Thorben Gaming, linked in the description. And subscribe if you like the content. Don't just subscribe, watch it. And if you like it, then subscribe. Okay, do it. <laughs> The final week and I am totally out of ideas and this video has already gone for quite a while, so it'll probably be a quick one. Most of my time this week was spent building and testing a few things I was curious about. For example, I was wondering if I could summon Desert Scourge two times at the same time. I could not and ended up needing to fight the one worm and couldn't stop pressing the wrong button while trying to change to my rogue class build. <laughs> Hitting all the wrong buttons! All the wrong buttons! I really am not great against Desert Scourge, it would seem, though he was quite helpful because he killed the traveling merchant, so I guess I might as well shimmer his hat, and I actually totally forgotten this was a thing until I saw the hat on the ground. So good job, Desert Scourge. Something I thought would be fun to do, but required an eye summon, which apparently I don't have, somehow, makes no sense to me, but crafting one is no big deal. I ever so slightly added to the desert arena, and I'm going to need it. See, what I want to do is try and defeat the Desert Scourge, Aya Cthulhu, and King Slime all at the same time. Oh, it's a Blood Moon Sue. Oh, this is perfect. This is going to go great. The battle was definitely interesting. I would never have thought of trying to take on all three of these bosses at once, at least not in this phase of progression. I ended up being wiped out, but this is definitely something I want to accomplish now. I farmed the Blood Moon for a money trough and was way too excited when it dropped. Oh, right at the last second, let's go! That finally opened up my inventory and I figured it was time to build the jungle pylon. For this one, someone in chat recommended an overgrown castle and I liked it so much, that's what I went for. It was a small castle styled to be similar to the one back home, but this one was built into the mud and I tried to make it look a bit more broken down. Of course, I needed some housing for the eventual pylon and the houses are okay, but overall, I like the build. The next night was another blood moon and that's kind of crazy. Didn't stop me from attempting the three boss fight again and I managed to take down the eye during the battle, at which point I figured victory was in hand, but then I ended up losing. So, at least I'm making progress, I just need to get good. Uh, I finished up the jungle build by adding this gem spark thing. Don't know what it is, but it's kind of interesting. I painted the ice platforms brown to make them look more deserty. I could have replaced them with a desert platform of some sort, but I did this instead, and I suppose for now I'm sticking with it. And the only pylon that doesn't have a special build other than the caves is the desert one. The building didn't end up quite the way I wanted, but I still need a few more things to finish it. There are so many build ideas I have, but I can't really do them until I get my hands on actuators. I guess I could technically build them, but then they would have a bunch of blocks in the way, so it's not really practical. I'm excited for March, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the night upon finishing, I attempted the three boss fight once more, and this time I came out on top. It's just weird, because the eye always died first, then Scourge, and then King Slime. King Slime ended up having next to no damage done to him over the course of the fight either, so I guess all the other bosses were body blocking for the slime, or he was just easy to run away from. I don't know, it was weird. But it was kind of cool fighting all three bosses and, and beating them, so maybe I'll have to do this in future months. At this point, I figured I'd explore a little bit, and the Sunken Sea seemed like a nice place to check out, and sure enough, there was a lab there. These calamity structures are always pretty neat, but I love the giant blue crystal in the sunken sea one. The thing is awesome, so awesome in fact, that I created a copy at spawn. At this point, spawn is quite disjointed in its uh, build style. I really need to fix that and make the whole area more cohesive. One suggestion was to turn the crane into a crystal drill, sort of combine the two builds, and I think I might have to do that. I just need to think of how to accomplish it first. But that's a next month thing. This month, I thought I'd explore the map a bit more. I explored a decent amount last year and my map reset, so perhaps I explored more than I think, but this year I figured it'd be cool to fill out a lot more of the map. I came across a glowing moss biome, at which point I was reminded that the paint scraper can be used to harvest moss from these things. I've never once gotten it to work, although I haven't ever tried that hard. Turns out there's only a chance for the moss to drop, not a guarantee. I would also always try to scrape the the, the purple moss that's actually on the stone, not the little bush things that are growing up. So I did it a few times the proper way and finally got this moss for the first time in my life, which is great because I need some of it to add to the jungle build. Only problem is 
this is purple moss, and I want green, it would fit better. I attempted painting it with every paint available, but the stuff won't change color. Does that mean I'm just stuck with purple moss unless the green moss biome spawns somewhere? Pretty sure there's no guarantee of getting each of the colored mosses or even more than just one color, so that really stink if I'm stuck with nothing but purple moss. I guess I might as well leave it until I figure that out, but I'm hopeful for green moss at some point. I haven't really visited the underworld as of yet, so I went down to see if I could explore the whole thing, but I didn't get very far before encountering an issue. Oh. Gosh darn it! No! <laughs> well, that's quite unfortunate. Pretty sure Calamity increases the spawn rate of voodoo demons, and although that's sort of nice, it also makes situations like this so much more likely, and for this challenge, that's not great. <laughs> Guess I'll have to ensure to uh, n die if it does happen again. I finish out the week and the month exploring all over the place and fighting Krabulon again for the heck of it. This month has really put me through my paces. Doubling the time in this world has given me so much time that I've run out of things to do. There were several times I was feeling a little bored and kind of wanted to sit and watch the time run out. I didn't feel particularly interested in building after having done so much of it already. There were no more bosses and what with being so early in progression, there isn't any real farming I can think of to do. It was tough, but still a really good time, and it has me curious as to what next month has in store.